Hello YouTube, this is Darkon633. I take a bring a review of the Transformers Robot Masters Optimus Primal. Now this is the first of my series uh, Blast from the Past reviews for this month under the Beast Wars theme. And while this toy wasn't a toy that was actually released under the Beast Wars toy line, it's still, to me personally, the most definitive version of Optimus Primal from Transformers Beast Wars. Now, I'm going to give a little shout out to TJ Omega who helped me actually get this figure after I bought it from him a little while back and um, go check up his channel since he does some pretty great reviews and I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to get this Optimus Primal from TJ Omega. So yeah, go check his videos out since they're pretty nice. Anyways, since he is a little bit in a smaller scale, I don't really have another Transformer besides this one other Beast Wars toy here with me right now since the rest are in uh, the uh, storage right now. Here he is with Transmetal 2 Tarantulas. And as you can see, he's quite a bit smaller than the original Beast Wars releases. And it would be nice if I get him on camera, sorry about that. But anyways, here he is next to Transmetal 2 Tarantulas. And he's just a little bit on the small side, but it's actually quite accurate in terms of Beast Mode scale. Now what makes this version of Primal a lot better is that the head sculpt is pretty awesome and dead on to his design featured in Beast Wars. Other features include the fact that he actually has the missile launchers in his arms that he actually used in the show. So that's really awesome that they actually included that. What's also cool is that on the back, he's got these two blasters that can actually fold out from the back here you kind of need to be careful since this plastic is a lot thinner than a lot of other toys. So yeah, it is not made in the same quality as a lot of the other toys. It's quite strange at some of the plastic designs that they used. But it does have these cool rocket launchers that he actually used in the show as well. What's also pretty awesome is that if you keep the sword stored in the back, and when you close the back of his beast mode here, Makes it kind of look like he has thrusters that are actually pretty much lit up as he's flying. So that's actually pretty great. And just to show that he does actually have these swords, these can actually come out from their uh, storage areas. But you kind of need to move the rockets in order to get them out. It can be a bit tricky at times, but once you do, he can actually hold it on in his hands, which is also pretty great. So if you want you can give him these swords which actually have pegs on them so you kind of need to put them in only in specific ways so let's put it on like this on both sides. And sometimes the swords do pop out so bear with me here. For some reason this one didn't like to stay in as well so I'm just gonna quickly this back on. So there you go. He has his dual saber that he used in the show. What's also great is that even in this version, he can actually put these together and put like a crossbow kind of design. Let me see how you're able to manage to do that. Oh yeah, that's right. It's actually a separate piece which is somewhere. I actually stored it away, including the little rocket launchers that the Robo Masters had. Those aren't particularly something based on the characters that were released in line, but it is just something that these versions of the toys included. I'm just gonna put the swords on the side, so anyways. We'll now go on to articulation points. His head is on a ball joint, which allows full movement, but being worried that the plastic quality as I mentioned before is a bit different than standard toys, since a lot of areas are a lot thinner, so they can be deemed a bit fragile if you're not careful. His shoulders can swivel 360, and his shoulder pads can bend up and down due to transformation. His arms can swivel and bend at 90 degree or so at the elbow. He has full waist articulation and can go all the way around. His legs are on very nice and tight ball joints, so allows full movement there. He can bend at the knee just a little bit around 90 degrees. Can't swivel, but his feet can kind of pivot due to transformation, so he is pretty well articulated. To transform into beast mode, it's quite simple, but it can be a bit tricky. First, you've got to pull this panel, which actually will kind of do an automorph into his robot face. And this version of the face isn't as accurate as some of the other Robo Master releases released in Japan. And just to know that these figures actually are Japanese exclusive and they never saw a stateside release in any form of the toy. 
Next, you're going to push down his shoulders and turn his hands around so that he can display them as if he's standing in beast mode. Turn this around and then push up the heel pieces so that the three toed versions appear. Put away his feet and kind of bend it in a position so that he's kind of in a gorilla stance. You kind of need to move around the ball joints as well. And there you have him in his beast mode. Now his beast mode is quite impressive and I really enjoy the design of the toy and I think this mode alone is what makes the Robo Master a lot stronger than the Ultra because it is a lot more accurately scaled compared to the other versions of Primal. And even though unfortunately I don't have any Beast Wars toys to show another comparison with in this mode, it is a really nice scale with the other Maximals and It'd be nice if Hasbro or Takara kind of makes new versions of the other Maxwell as well. I mean, I know we did get Rat Trap, Cheetor, and Rhinox, along with Dinobot, but it would be nice to see even more representations of the characters, maybe a new Megatron, and so on and so forth, and especially Predacon, since besides Waspinator, that's pretty much all we got for new Predacon, pretty much, and near some new toy. It'll be nice to see more toys in the future. Anyway, since this is quick, I'm going to quickly show it back into Realm Mode. First, you're going to pull this down. And then reveal the head. Push on his arms and pull up his shoulder pads. Turn the hands around. Push down the legs. Turn the heel pieces so now the full foot design is revealed. Turn this entire waist around and pull down the toes. And there you have Optimus Primal back in his robot mode. Now, the Robo Master release may not apply to all people's tastes since it's not exactly the same exact quality as some of the other, let's say, a generation's toy design. But for the time it was released, I think it's a pretty decent toy for a version of the character that I personally think is, if not the best size representation of the character thus far. Now, nowadays the figure is quite difficult to get a hold of, even with the recent re-release in Japan, but that was also a very limited release, so it can be a bit tricky to track down. But if you do and find it for a good deal, then I definitely think it's a worthwhile pickup, especially if you're a fan of Optus Primal or Beast Wars in general. Anyways, please comment and subscribe, and don't forget to check out Hirotaku for the latest in hero news. Please check down the channels that below, including the WRW podcast, which is now moved to YouTube, which is also linked below. Also check me out on Twitter under DarkOn633, and I'll see you YouTube. Bye.